You know Frank from his Pixie Inside scripts. You know him from clearing space up with cosmic clarity. But now Frank is back, and this time with a vengeance. With a mission to make the resolution of your pictures blow up. All about super resolution right after the trailer. Hey, this is Free Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So good to meet you all, and thanks for watching my channel. So I thought we start right here on my computer as this is really something that is happening here in the computer. So Frank from Seti Astro has released Super Resolution which is part of his Cosmic Clarity Suite but also can be used through PixInsight and as I'm fully invested in PixInsight we will focus today on that but at the end the results stay about the same. So Frank always chooses these cool names super resolution in most other softwares it's called upscaling which means we actually double triple or quadruple the original resolution now this can be accomplished in various ways there is actually a way in PixInsight how you can upscale obviously PixInsight does it in the worst possible way it just takes a pixel makes four pixels out of that or whatever and the result is really not better than it was before then on the very other side you have softwares like Luminar Neo or like Topaz which have generative AI upscale functions that is amazing for landscape photography or whatever but in astrophotography where we want to have accuracy we do not want to use generative AI and so Frank went here the same route as also Russell Croman does that he states he tries based on trained AI to a good and very realistic result but without using generative AI so that nothing that's not really there is invented. Now I tested it out in the last day and I want to give you my take on it where it's great and where it's not so great. As many things, so many scripts, many processes, it's another tool in our pocket that's amazing, but as all the others, usually they're not silver bullets. You, you have to use them when it really makes sense. But before we come to that, let us just look here at Frank's homepage, say the Astro. If you go to Astro Programs, Cosmic Clarity, you end up on this page. You can download here on the left side, on this folder, the Cosmic Clarity Suite that fits to your OS. He has Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you wish. And you need to install that even if you use it from PixInsight. And then on the other side here you have the PixInsight instructions where after you installed the full version, you can, based on this repository URL, actually download the scripts and then use it right out of PixInsight. And with that, we switch now to PixInsight. So you will find these scripts in Script, Seti Astro, and then here they are. Cosmic Clarity Super Resolution and all the other Cosmic Clarity ones. But this is what we're focusing today on. So this is how it looks like when you open the script. Here you can choose which photo you want to upscale. Here you can switch the factor from times two to times four. And the first time you actually have to click the wrench here and then choose the parent directory where you installed the Cosmic Clarity suite. You have to do that once, it saves it afterwards. Obviously enable GPU acceleration, leave that on, that really helps. Here are my M2 Mac Mini Pro. It really runs, including the metal acceleration, so that's fine. Okay, we're looking at two very different use cases with very, very different outcomes. And that here is the first one, Andromeda. That is a picture taken with my SIBO ASI 2600. And what I did with this picture, actually I only run blur exterminator over it nothing else 
Now there is something we have to take into, into consideration from the start. Such a picture taken with the IMX571 sensor has 26 megapixels. Now here it was a little bit cropped, so we were down at about 10 megapixels. So far so good. But now this picture is drizzled. Factor 2, which is in principle also an upscaling. And factor 2 means squared by 2. So we arrive at 100 megapixel, or as you can see, 12,100 times 8,028 pixels. So now, when we're actually upscaling this by a factor of 2, we're getting <laughs> to a resolution of 400 megapixels or here 24,200 times 16,000 pixels. That is amazingly a lot. And while that sounds really cool, even a rather fast computer like mine with a lot of memory has kind of a problem coping with that, especially under the hood of PixInsight. So just an STF of such a picture takes about 10 seconds. I don't want to know how long some of the other processes take with such a monster of a picture. That's just something to keep in mind. And then there's the other problem. While Frank really tried with using the GPU, tried to minimize the time that it takes, again I have a Mac Mini M2 Pro fully specced up, but actually to upscale one picture here takes about a half an hour. So conclusion of all of that is it has to be amazingly good that it's worth it. And the question is, is it? And that's what we look at, at it right now. So there's two ways how you can do that. Definitely it only makes sense in a combination with Blur Exterminator and with Drizzling. Because the idea is that you enable either Blur Exterminator to work better based on the upscaling or you upscale the results of Blur Exterminator to actually enlarge that. So that's why I also did all these pictures with Blur Exterminator. So what we're comparing at the moment is we have one with only Blur Exterminator and we have one where we first upscaled and then we did Blur Exterminator. I put them now over each other and I toggle them. And while you see some stars moving when I toggle, if when we look at the galaxy, the effects are minimal. And even if, if they're there, I don't know if they're good or not. So definitely from, from this perspective, looking at a whole picture, nothing really changes. So what we do now is zoom now in. And at the moment we go here with a 1 to 4 for the BXT, that's then a 1 to 8 for the upscaled one. We toggle again. And what we actually see is that the halos of the larger stars are actually enlarged. These stars look bigger when it's upscaled than the other way around, which is not really what we want. We see a very little bit here at the center of the galaxy a little bit more detail, I don't even know if it's detail, with, um, with the upscaled one than with the not upscaled one. Otherwise, again, neglectable, um, the differences. So we zoom in further. And now we go by a two by one, which is then a one on one with the upscaled one. So this was upscaled times two. And even here, it's hard to say which one is better. For example, here, which star is better? For me, this star is better, and that's without being upscaled. So I have a hard time finding with this method, first upscaling, then BXT, any advantages, rather the opposite around. So let's now see it the other way around. We do first BXT and then we upscale. Could that be better? Now again, no surprise on a full magnifications. We see some kind of more stars when it's upscaled. So it can be that it even 
highlights, stars which are not visible without being upscaled or it even invents. That's hard to identify. So let's go now more into detail again. You can go here to a 1 to 6, which then is for BXT a 1 to 3. Let's see. And changes are minute at best. Let's try it here with the core. Again, there's a little bit in the core, but otherwise I don't see any differences. So as a conclusion here for this picture, from a practicality point of view that these pictures get almost unmanageable from a size point of view, from that it takes half an hour to upscale to the minute effect they might have. I don't really see a use case for that for full scale drizzle pictures. Doesn't make any sense at all. And with that we come to the second use case. A use case with a completely different outcome. Could you guess what it is? A planetary nebula. This is probably the best use case of all for upscaling. And I used it, even I used Luminar Neo and with that Gen AI, but I used that already quite a while, the upscaling. Because you see, except you have a high focal range SCT, but otherwise, usually planetary nebula we shoot with our refractors with 400, 700, whatever millimeters, and they are so tiny, actually from a resolution point of view, we come here at a level where it's hard afterwards for tools to really make a good picture out of it. And if we look at that, that was taken with my ASCAR 103 APO, so 700 millimeters. But I cropped it now, especially for this purpose here, I really cropped it down to the real planetary nebula. And we are at 1500 times 1300 pixels. That is not a lot. And for people who shoot these nebulas with 400, 300 millimeters, that is even less. So at the end, you're about at 300 times 400 pixels or whatever. That's really tough. So here, upscaling makes a lot of sense. So again, I went the same way as before. Once I tried it first upscale, then BXT, that's actually a little bit what also Frank explained in his video. And then we tried the other way around. So we're here we have now the picture, first upscaled, then BXT. We toggle and, and the picture looks sharper. The noise is less visible, but the stars get blurry. Do you see that? The stars get extremely blurry much worse than before. The nebulosity gets a little bit better, but, but it's, it's not a good result. So let's try the other way around. First BXT, like here, and then upscale. And by the way, here I did an upscale times four. And here we have a completely different story. The stars, they're sharp. They're not much sharper than they were before, but they're not worse. And sometimes I feel it took even a little bit of the halo here. The noise, much reduced. And definitely the, the nebulosity has improved a tiny little bit. And that's not the point here, because it's not so much about the instant beautification based on the upscaling but it's actually with the upscaling to enable then the tools which come afterwards, be it the stretching, be it some tools that add contrast or detail or whatever, to enable them to actually do that. Because if you don't have any resolution, it's simply not possible afterwards for the tools to really have a, a good effect. So and that in principle is the bottom line of this whole video. Frank's tool, from my point of view, has exactly one use case, and that's planetary nebulas. Or perhaps very small galaxies, you know, just tiny stuff where you do not have the focal length to really bring it large on your sensor, but you turn out with a very low amount of resolution 
and then you want to pump that up that it's up afterwards feasible for you to process it in a right way and for that i think frank's tool is absolutely great as it definitely is much better than a just stupid upscale like PixInsight would do and without going the risk of using gen ai and producing a fantasy picture if you experiment with it and if you find other use cases please leave it in the comments below really interested to hear from you about your experience with the super resolution script so see you next time and clear skies